Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to remove alternative rows. So I'll show two examples of how we can do this. And one example is basically using the mod function. And the other example is going to be using a feature in Excel that you can download. It's called Power Query, where you can uh, remove alternate rows that uh, maybe really don't really have that much of a rhyme and reason, but they do have a specific pattern. So let's go with the first example here. So let's say, for example, we wanted to remove uh, every uh, third row, row three, row six, row nine. So basically what we want to do is we want to use a mod function. Um, let me go ahead and just type mod here. So the mod function, what it does is it divides a number and gives you the remainder, right? So it gives you the remainder for that number. So what we can do is we can use the row function first and type row. And what the row does is it tells you what row number it's in. So I can just put, I don't have to put an argument in here. I can just type row, open parentheses, close parentheses. It tells me I'm in the second row. But uh, basically what I want to do is I want to indicate that this is the first row. A2 is the first row. So I'm going to go ahead and minus one here. Right? So it tells me that it's going to start at number one. So I, all I need to do now is double click it. It's going to bring the formula down, copy the formula down, and it's going to increment it now. So it's done that. What I, what now I want to do is I want to divide that number. Let's say, for example, I just want to keep the number. I want to go ahead, either keep the number three or remove the number three. Every third row, right? Three, six, nine. What I can do now is wrap this row function within another function called mod, M-O-D. I go ahead and press the tab key. It opens up that parentheses. Now, this is a number which it's giving me one, two, three, four, five, and I want to indicate the divisor. So I'm going to divide it by three. So one divided by three will give me a remainder. Two divided by three will give me a remainder, and three divided by three will give me a remainder. But that remainder will be zero. So the rest of it gives me a non-zero remainder. But anything that is in the multiples of three gives a remainder of zero. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and close parentheses. Press Control Enter to stay in that cell. Uh, let me go ahead and double click it to bring that formula down. And so now I have one, two, zero, one, two, zero. So we see a pattern here. So let me go ahead and turn on the filters here. Uh, let me go ahead and turn on the filter here. So what we can do now is let's say, for example, we want to just keep any of the third rows. So basically, that's anything with a zero here in the mod function. So now I've got 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. And all, that's because the mod function has given me the remainder of 0. Now let's say, for example, I want to do the opposite. You can just go ahead and deselect that, 1, 2, and then you've got the opposite. So every third row is removed, so you can copy and paste it onto another cell. So this is a good example if you've got a list of records here, and you want to, and those records, you can number them, 1, 2, 3, four or five, etc., and then use the mod function to create a, a kind of a filter, every odd number, every even number, every third number, every fourth number. So you can just kind of put that divisor there if you wanted to do it by every fourth number. Let's say, for example, so if we wanted to do it by every fifth number, we would just change that divider by five, right? So that would change it. If I change it by five, press enter, let me go ahead and double click it to bring it down. You now notice that it's changed it. Let me go ahead and unfilter that. And it's going, oops, let's see. Yeah, some of it didn't change. So basically what we need to do is unfilter it first and then change it. So this is the F5. I'm going to go ahead and double click the fill handle to copy the formula down. And now you see my pattern shows up. One, two, three, four. The fifth number is a zero. So we can, so we can filter it that way. So what if we have a different scenario? Let me go ahead and go into example two here. So what if we have a different scenario? Well, if we wanted to keep the first four rows and, and remove the, or we want to remove the first four rows and keep the fifth and sixth row. So it'd be the same here. So here in this instance, uh, keep the four, remove the four and keep uh, two here. So if there's some alternating uh, rows that we want to keep that are more than one, uh, we can actually still do it this way. You know, we would just select it. But there's another way that we can do it using something called Power Query. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring this table into Power Query. Now, Power Query is a Power BI functionality, um, yet it's an add-on uh, for 2010 and Excel 2010 and Excel 2013. So you have to go ahead and you can just Google uh, Power Query add-on download. You have to download it, and after you download it and install it, you have to enable it. And so there's instructions on the web if you can Google it. And once you enable it, you can, you'll can have this Power Query tab. And once I click on the Power Query tab, all I need to do is um, I want to bring this 
data in from the table. So when I, once I click on this command, it's going to turn that set of that range into a table. I'm going to indicate my table as headers here. I'll go ahead and click OK. And it's going to bring it into something called the Power Query Editor. Now, if I wanted to remove alternate rows, but they weren't kind of evenly uh, spaced out, um, I can go ahead and use the Remove rows command here. So one of the reasons probably would be a good idea to use power query as opposed to using the form of the mod function is if you have a lot of rows, this is probably where you're talking about into the 500,000, 100, a million, or you do this on a repetitive day repetitive basis. You probably want to create this, uh, do it in Power Query, and if you ever had to bring in new data again, it, it kind of keeps that data, it keeps the steps involved. And you'll know what I mean when I you look at here where the applied steps are there. So basically what we do is we bring this data in into Power Query and we go remove rows and it lets you remove, it uh, gives you different options to remove, remove rows. You can remove the top rows, uh, you, can, you can indicate how many rows you want to remove from the top, let's say just the, the top three, and it'll, it'll take one, two, and three. And now you know, since I did that step, it gave a history of the steps that were done to this particular, um, this file. Uh, what I can do here is I can click that X and it'll delete that step. And we're back it back into the original data here. And that's kind of, you can think of it as an undo function. Now, I showed you the top rows. What if we wanted to remove the bottom rows? You can remove the bottom rows too. Maybe the, the bottom five rows, sorry. That will leave us to just the row 20, right? So we click OK. And now we have a row 20 left here. So we can go ahead and click X to do that. Now, the one magic here is removing alternate rows. So if I click on alternate rows, it gives me a couple options I need to fill in. So let's say, for example, I want to start at the first row to remove. And I want to remove four rows. So as I mentioned, uh, maybe I want to remove four rows and keep two rows. So it's going to remove uh, these four rows and keep five and six. And then go ahead, go ahead down here, remove four rows and keep 11 and 12 and so on. So if I click OK, you notice that it's done that 5 and 6, 11, 12, and it's done that in a kind of a, not, not a haphazard basis, but more of an alternating type of um, row seek. So instead of having an odd and even, uh, it gives you a little bit more flexibility in, in determining uh, maybe X number of rows here and Y number of rows there to keep. So after that's done, uh, we have to get out of query editor and put it into Excel, we go ahead and click close and load. And what it's going to do is it's going to create a new worksheet and put the results of that particular steps there. So we have 5, 6, 11, and 12. So as I mentioned before, there's two ways that we can remove alternate rows. We can use the mod function to create our, our mod numbers, our, our remainder numbers, and use the filtering to keep or remove records or rows. Or we can use the Power Query function to do, uh, in effect, a similar thing. Now, the one of the nice things about the Power Query function is if you've got large set of data or you kind of wanted to do, remove uh, these alternate rows, maybe you want to keep keep four, remove two, like what I showed here, uh, you can do that a little bit easier with Power Query. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.